Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. With the built-in tool in G-Sender, it's now easier than ever to do a surfacing job on your long mill. Today, I'll be talking about the importance of surfacing and how you can use this tool in G-Sender to do this easily. Surfacing is important as it makes sure that the mounting surface or the wasteboard is completely flat in relation to your machine. By using the long mill to cut a surface in the flat plane, we can ensure that the new surface is parallel to the machine itself. I highly recommend doing this after setting up your machine for the first time as it gives you a smooth cutting surface when you first start using your machine. Surfacing can be also be used when you have projects that are sensitive to variations in height. The perfect example of this would be for V-carving. Having high and low spots on the material can leave inconsistent line widths as the depth of the cut of the V-bit is critical in getting the correct cut width. To get started, open up G-Sender on your computer. From the upper right group of menu items, click on surfacing. This will bring up the surfacing tool. Now let's look at the different settings. First are your X and Y dimensions. Depending on the profile that you have set on G-Sender, firmware settings, these might already be set to the maximum travel area of your machine, but in this case, it, they don't look like they, that's the case, and so we'll be measuring the X and Y dimensions of the surfacing board. If you're surfacing a piece of material instead, you can also put the maximum dimensions of the part. You can do this with a tape measure or a ruler, but what I like to do is mount the material to the machine first, zero the machine to the material, and then jog the machine to find the approximate dimension of the material. I would also recommend making this a little bit bigger than the actual dimensions, just so that you can surface the whole piece. I'll quickly demonstrate this now. All right, so let's pretend I want to surface this piece of material. If I were to actually do this, I would mount this to the machine, but in this case, I'll just use put this here. Next, I'll jog the machine to the origin point. If you have an auto zero touch plate or a touch plate that can do this, you can also use this to zero the uh, position as well. But in this case, I'm just going to eyeball it. And I have this V bit just at the very tip of this uh, corner. Then I'm going to press zero all. And now I can jog the machine all the way to the right to reach the other end of the material. And I can use the digital readout on G-Sender to find the uh, distance traveled or the dimension of the x-axis. So jogging it here, it's about a 350 millimeters. And then looking at the bottom of the y to the top, we can get an approximate dimension here by jogging it in the y-axis. And, and the dimension of that is approximately 95 millimeters. Now if we go back to the surfacing tool, we'll put 350. Uh, I'm actually going to do 360 to add a little bit of margin. And 110 in the y-axis to set the height. Next we have the cut depth and max setting. The cut depth indicates the depth of cut. In our case, we're gonna do uh, zero point, let's do one millimeter. And then the depth per cut or the max cut would be how deep you cut overall. In this case, I'll do also do one. If we did something like three, then we would take three one millimeter depths of passes. So you can choose how deep you wanna cut per pass. Next, we have the bit di di diameter. In our case, we're gonna use the surfacing bit. That looks so something like this. All you need is a flat cutting tool. Sometimes if it's wider, it's a little bit faster because you can take wider cuts at a time. But you can even do this with a flat end mill or any type of flat bit. Next, we have the spindle RPM. In our case, we're just using the Makita router, so we don't need to worry about the spindle RPM, so I'll just leave that alone. The feed rate is how fast the machine is gonna move back and forth. In this case, I'll set this to 1800. And then the step over is kind of like the width of each pass. 
So the bigger the step over is, the more of the bit we're gonna use. So let's say we have a 40 millimeter, sorry, a 40% a 40 step over, then we do take a pass 40% of the width of the bit. If we do 50%, it'll be half the bit. If you do 100%, it'll be the full width of the bit. Um, I typically go a little bit below 50%. Um, and so I'll set this to 40%. Next, we have the start position. That's where we wanna start the surfacing from. Uh, in our case, we're doing the left bottom corner. Uh, but if you have a different position that you wanna start on, you can click the button here and you can change the origin point. Next, you can uh, choose what sh shape or surfacing type you wanna do. Um, we have a spiral type, which basically starts from the center and goes around back and forth like this, or a left and right or raster type or zigzag type. We'll go back and forth like this. I generally prefer going back and forth like this because the lines are, uh, the surfacing lines are more consistent as, and so I'll set it to that. But I'll just generate the G code here and then you can see what it looks like in the visualization. So you can see here, it's gonna spiral around over and over again. Or if I do a back and forth, press generate G code, then I'll go back and forth like this. I can, once you have the G code set up. Oh, and another thing to mention, if you wanna save the G code for later use, you can click on G code viewer and copy this into a text file. And then once you copy this into a text file, you can run it as a G code program and you can use this over and over again. So let's go back to visualizer preview, click on run on main visualizer. And you can see here now we have the G code put directly into the G sender software. All right, I'm just gonna change the bit on this guy. So yeah, we're using our 22 millimeter surfacing bit here. You can use any bit that's flat. Uh, so like a two flute bit or anything like that will work. But usually the wider and flatter they are, the, the faster you can do the surfacing. So now I have the surfacing bit and I'm just gonna leave the zero uh, up high so we can see the movement. We're not actually gonna cut this. So from here you can uh, press start job and it should start, it'll go down a millimeter and then start going back and forth. It'll do the, uh, They'll do an outline pass really quickly. So yeah, if you want to just do the uh, smaller piece of material, then you just have to set up the origin point, get a, get a measurement of the X and Y dimensions, and then you can uh, set it up on the G sender surfacing program. All right, this time I'm going to set it up to do the surfacing of the full waste board here. Um, what I'll do is I'll jog this all the way to the bottom left corner, and then I'm going to measure the outside profile of all these MDF slats, and then we're gonna surface them all flat. And once we finish that, then we'll have a really flat, nice surface to cut on. 
because I have homing sensors installed on this machine, uh, we're just gonna home it to the bottom left corner and then we'll use that as the uh, starting point. So I'm going to zero it over here. I can't really move it past this spot here anyway, so um, I'm just, it'll just be a ridge on that spot. So zero all, you can jog it all the way to the right side. So that's uh, 814, and then all the way to the top. That's about 812 millimeters, and then all the way to the back. That's about 800. So about 800 and we'll do 814 by 800. So I'll go to the surfacing tool. 814 by 800. And then my cut depth and max, I'll keep at one millimeter. Feed rate, I'll do 2200. Step over is 40 is good. And then a zigzag pass. Generate the G code. Run on the main visualizer, and now I have a G code file that will go and surface the waste board here. I'm going to go to XY0. All right, now that we have the uh, bit in the starting position, I'm just going to use the paper test to. Uh, zero the uh, bit, that should be good. And make sure that the bit is, uh, sorry, the, um, I'm gonna make sure that the z-axis is zeroed. And then I'm gonna raise it up just a little bit. I'm gonna start the router. It's okay. Press start job. I should start surfacing the waste board. Alrighty, there you have it. We have a freshly surfaced spoil board. Um, you can see near the back middle here, um, it's probably a little bit lower on this side where the sh cuts are a little shallower and then they kind of fade off. Um, and then you can see on the front side, you have a little bit deeper of a cut. So what's probably likely is that the whole surface board was kind of tilted this way. And so once we surface the whole thing, it'll basically level the whole uh, playing field out here. 
So yeah, uh, that's the surfacing process. If you want to do another pass and get it down even further so that the whole board is fully surfaced, you can do that. Um, I'll just go through the same steps and just start a little bit lower. Uh, and that's basically that. So yeah, once you've done this and you start using the machine, your spoil board is gonna get dinged up. You're gonna have like holes and uh, cuts and things like that. And so you can just resurface, give yourself a clean surface and keep doing that over and over again until you lose your whole board and just replace it with another one. Uh, yeah, so hopefully that video was helpful um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, bye.